Check. Good morning. <laughs> I'm not singing today. <laughs> For 10 years, I've been standing on this stage. Uh, of course, different premises singing to y'all. But today is different, okay? Today, uh, I trust that uh, there's a message from God which we're going to deliver it to you and, uh, and I hope it blesses you. So I guess I'm going to start off with uh, a little sharing. Uh, myself uh, and my wife, you know, uh, a couple of years ago, we bought a new car. Uh, that was a couple of years ago. So we went and collect the new car and after we collect the new car and then uh, she drove off and uh, reached home. So at home, at that evening, I remember I told her, I said, I said, dear, uh, would you want to read the car manual? And uh, she said, uh, no need lah, you know. So, um, so she didn't read, of course. How many of you read car manuals? You know? So she didn't read and she's managed to actually operate the car and she managed to actually get from uh, one place to another, you know, and she can, uh, as, as she drives the car, she figures out how the car works and the functions of the car as she goes along, but didn't read, okay? So a couple of weeks ago, just recently, a couple of weeks ago, as I was uh, in a meeting and I received a call uh, in my phone and then uh, she, she told me, said, dear, uh, there is a punctured tire uh, on my car. So I said, <laughs> You see, la, you never read the car manual. <laughs> so I, I was very naggy at that time. So I told her, so I said, okay, let's, let's solve this. Uh, call the auto assist because in insurance, you subscribe to it. Then there is this uh, free towing uh, assist or auto assist guy can come and help you to change the car tire. So she called, the auto assist guy came and uh, I got another phone call. And she said, dear, uh, how to lower down the spare tire of the car, you know, so there I go again. So I was mumbling, I said, you see, like, you see, that's the reason you never read and all these things. So I was a bit naggy that time. So, but finally, then I remember, oh, the car manual was placed at the pocket of the door. So I said, go and check it out. So she took it and then she read it and both of them managed to figure out and uh, managed to lower down the car from the floorboard of the car with the special tools that is there and then get the car uh, uh, moving again and she gets on with her destination again, right? So the book of Romans is actually like a car manual, you know? It's a very technical book. I discovered this uh, uh, and, and it's amazing, you know, that Paul uh, devoted... Uh, the entire book of Romans, preaching to the Christians. Strange, right? We are supposed to preach to non-believers, but Paul devoted the book of Romans to preach to the Christians. And there is a reason for this. It was a burning desire, and the theme of Romans is actually what? The theme of Romans is righteousness, right? Paul has a burning desire to establish that righteousness is key. Righteousness, if you understand that and if you are established in it, you can live life in its full potential out going from destination to destination without having much trouble. By the way, I love my wife very much. Okay, so there's no problem. <laughs> okay. She's very serious now. Look at me. <laughs> okay, so, um, so that's what the book of Romans is all about. So that's what Paul uh, wants to establish, right? Righteousness is key, all right? And he also knows that, you see, in Romans era, uh, in Rome, people are converting from the Mosaic era to the gospel. People are converting from pagans worshipping to the gospel, right? New believers are coming to the gospel. So, in Rome, it is actually a mixture, right? It is a mixture of different ones with different understanding of the gospel. Some, last time, used to actually believe that, look, this is the performance of law which it is required by me, and if I do this, do this, do this, then by merits gets salvation. But now the requirement is I'm saved by grace through faith. So it's different, right? So people take time 
to learn. Then Paul used this opportunity to write to the Romans. And that is what we have been learning for the past chapters. You know, things like, uh, simple things like um, no condemnation, no separation. That is the truth, right? In the past, you know, what happened is that we used to think that, oh, if I sin, then I need to spend X number of time, I think, lah, huh? X number of time getting myself right back to God again. And that's what happened to, my, to me in my life, you know. I thought I committed the unpardonable sin, you know. I was mis in, uh, it's miserable, you know, until, until there is this church called TNCC, you know. <laughs> it's an amazing church, you know, that accepts people and grooms people and ensure people are built and understand and establish in righteousness. And you live life in its fullest, fullest potential again, functioning. Right? Amen? Okay? So that is uh, what righteousness, you know, that Paul wants to establish. But let looks, let's, let's look at chapter 14. Okay? Chapter 14, it's a little bit different because Paul is also an expert in community living. Do you know that? Because he understands when there is different one comes together, there's going to be a little bit, in Hokkien you say luan, or messy, you know? And that's the, 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 the thing that Paul is actually addressing right now in chapter 14, okay? Chapter 14 says, it says, offer an open hand of fellowship to welcome. Can we say welcome? Can you turn to one another with your face mask, of course, then try to smile and say welcome. Offer an open hand of fellowship to welcome every true believer, even though their faith may be weak and immature, and refuse to engage in debates with them concerning nothing more than opinions. You see, in this diverse community, you know what's the first thing Paul said in verse 1? Welcome, right? Welcome. This is what we do, right? Every Sunday. I cannot put the real pictures up because of SOP. So I put these pictures, okay? So this is what we do. Every Sunday, every time we meet in CG, every time we meet for our ministry, we actually welcome one another, right? We welcome everyone, the young, the old, the one in need, the children. We welcome everyone, okay? So we welcome one another, okay? But there is this thing that Paul wants to highlight, which is even though they may be weak and immature. Remember, Paul is an expert in community living also. So he's able to identify the weak and immature. And this weak and immature has got nothing to, about, nothing to do about sickness or uh, handicap. No, it's not. The weak and immature Paul is referring to it's about the one that will engage in debates concerning nothing more than opinions. Can you see that? Paul calls them weak and immature. Okay? And, and I would like to actually uh, say this. Paul defines what is weak and immature. And we can see that in the verse in 1 Corinthians 8. Verse 2, the Passion Translation, and it reads, it says, If anyone thinks of himself as know-it-all, <laughs> he still has a lot to learn. Strange, huh? If anyone thinks he still has, uh, what? He's know-it-all, he still has a lot to learn. Right? And in the 80s and 90s, lah, huh? so those of you in that era, Pastor Peter is not included, okay? He doesn't know why it's this, okay? This is actually the cartoon Smurf. Just kidding, okay? Okay, if you know this character, Smurf, this is actually Brainy Smurf, right? Huh? He's the annoying one, right? You watch the cartoon, whenever Brainy Smurf goes into this conversation with them, and he will, nah, 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 this, nah, this is the solution, this, 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 and everybody will be annoyed because he is the know-it-all person, Right? But Paul says, you are weak and immature and you still 
have a lot more to learn. There's another category of people and it is actually found in the verse before. And it says here, knowledge puffs up, but love edifies. Right? In another translation in Amplified Bible, it says, knowledge alone makes people self-righteously arrogant. So you've got two people here. <laughs> one is the know-it-all, one is the arrogant. And the Bible says this, these are weak and immature. Bearing in mind, Paul understands community living and he knows that this is what Rome might be and will be or perhaps is already going through now. And he writes this epistle to them, encouraging them. Okay? All right? So, so the contrast of this is actually found in the later part of the verse. Instead of being this, what is this? You have love, right? Love that unselfishly seeks out the best for others. So, what do we do? What do we do now when we are in this situation? You know what Paul says? He says, the second part of it, he says, and refuse, and refuse to engage in debates with them concerning nothing more than opinions. So, we have two things here, right? So, we refuse to quarrel over opinions and in some translation it says that don't jump all over them every time they say something you don't agree with even when they are strong on opinions it's amazing right verse 1 itself uh, summarizes the entire message that Paul wants to reach out to them right so now let's look at the examples that Paul wants to show, okay? So the issue here is this. The issue is that, of course, they are quarreling. Lah, oh? The issue is that they are quarreling bet between what? Vegetarian? Non-vegetarian, right? The one that can... Oh, Chan Meng Ke is there. Cha Siu. Huh? Cha Siu, or you can eat uh, vegetarian, you know? The issue is about I setting aside one day it is holy or every day it's set aside for the Lord. If you have friends in, who, are, who are Roman Catholics, you will know that Friday is a day that they don't eat meat. And to them, that is actually a holy day. Alright? Okay? So, Paul says here, in the same way, one person, one person regards a certain day as more sacred than another, and another person regards them all alike. There is nothing wrong with having different personal convictions about such matter. There is nothing wrong, Paul says. Nothing wrong, okay? For the person who observes one day as especially sacred, does it to honor the Lord. And the same is true regarding what a person eats. The one who eats everything eats to honor the Lord because he gives thanks to God. And the one who has a special diet does it to honor the Lord and he also gives thanks to God. You know this situation here just now? Paul says both groups actually honor the Lord. So it's okay. You know, Paul says both groups actually honor the Lord. But in reality, in reality, this is what that is happening. If you look into verse 3, this is the reality. The reality is that the one who is not vegetarian is despising the vegetarian. Uh, the one that is not vegetarian is treating this person as worthless. You are tabule pakai. You are worthless. Right? And the one who actually is a vegetarian is judging the one that is not vegetarian. And the word judge here 
in the Greek is called krino, K-R-I-N-O, which means it is actually looking, it's like a judge that looking at the, the requirements and then say that you are guilty, I am innocent. That is the attitude and the position that is in. And that's the reality. Remember Paul said both groups, actually, it's okay. They both honour the Lord. But the reality is that they are actually judging one another. They look down at one another. Okay? And Paul says this thing. He says, you have to remember. You have to remember why. Because God has welcomed. Remember we say the word just now, welcome. God has welcomed all of us. Welcomed them and taken them as what? As his partner. Say partner. We are his partner. And I like the message Bible translation. And it says here, very good definition about partner. But since both are guests, both are uh, Vegetarian, not vegetarian. Both are guests at Christ's table. Wouldn't it be terribly rude if they fell to criticizing what the other ate or didn't eat? God, after all, invited them both to the table. Do you have any business crossing people off the guest list or interfering with God's, God's welcome? If there are corrections to be made or manner to be learned, God can handle that without your help. Hello. <laughs> God can handle that. It is God's welcome. Right? Amen? So, the first solution is what just now we saw. Refuse. Refuse. Right? And what's next? We should also stop being critical and condemning our brothers and sisters. Right? So why stop? It's also in the Bible. So stop being critical and condemning of other believers, but instead determine to never deliberately cause a brother or sister to stumble because of your actions. This is why you should stop. Because it will cause your brother or sister to stumble. Wow, like that also can stumble. Uh. Can. Paul says one. Uh. All right. Why stop? Because we can be an obstacle. You know what's obstacle? Something that you trip on it, then you fall. Uh. All right. It can also be a source of temptation. Stranger, uh. how can this kind of uh, discussion can be a source of temptation? Let me submit to you Anger, tidak puas hati, can arise, right? It's anger, then I'm tempted. When I'm tempted, I start to plot. When I start to plot, then Darby translation is that I do a fall trap. I can revenge. So Paul says very strongly, remember he's an expert in community living. He says first, refuse. Then he says, stop. Right? So, <laughs> just for those who want to know what happens if you don't stop. Lah. The Bible also got say, ah? okay? So, it says in verse 15 here, and we heard it just now. If your brother or sister is offended because you insist on eating what you want, remember the know-it-all and arrogant attitude? It is no longer love that rules your conduct anymore. No longer love. You want to win? No longer love. You want to do? No longer love. So that is the character. There is a character that Paul is urging, right? Us to be, right? And what is it? It is what we saw just now in 1 Corinthians 8 verse 1. The character is love. Love that what? That unselfishly seeks the best for others. Love that is unselfishly and I'm seeking out 
the best for others. And not just seeking out, I am also unselfishly building a brother or sister and at the same time encourage them to grow. That was my personal experience here in this beautiful church. You know, I came in here, people here, they unselfishly seek out to love me, to build and to encourage me so that I can grow here and in wisdom, right? Knowledge puffs up, but to grow in wisdom, okay? So it is really amazing that all it, it takes, all it takes at the first verse is what? Welcome. Turn to one another again, a bit serious idea. Turn to one another, smile and say, welcome. Welcome. Okay? So what do we do? When we learn this kind of thing, there must be an application, right? So what do we do? In the message translation, the application is simple. Let me just read the entire verse. Welcome again, welcome. With open arms, fellow believers who don't see things the way you do. Don't jump all over them every time they do or say something you don't agree with. Even when it seems that they are strong opinions but weak in the faith department, here's what you do. Remember, they each have their own history to deal with. Paul understands, you know. There are people who come and say that, look, it's hey, Qi strange, ah? why ah? now ah? saved by grace through faith. Ah? Last time ah, is by the law. Leh. Last time I need to observe these are the things that I need to do in order to perform. If I did something wrong now, I should go and confess as many times as possible. Now I'm here to receive and receive and receive. It's actually a paradigm shift for them. Remember, they are in a process and they have their own history to deal with. And Paul says this thing, the next word, treat them gently. Can I not? Treat them gently. So what do we do? We can ask the Lord to show us wisdom, how to encourage. Ask the Lord to show us what are the words that we can use to say in such situations if we face it as a community? The next thing is that last week's sermon, Brother Kerry preached this and he says this. The first verse again, he said, Every person must submit and support to the authorities over him for there can be no authority in the universe except by God's appointment, which means that every authority that exists has been instituted by God. Passion translation. Can I say also that we also submit to the authorities in the church also? Uh, your CG leaders, your ministry leaders, Pastor Peter, right? Our senior pastor. Amazing guy, right? Yeah. Right? So little earlier. Yeah. Come on. Amazing guy, right? The Lord has given him the vision to start this place. And it's been actually an interesting journey for many of us. You know, there are so many testimonies. You know, testimonies after testimonies. Have you have seen that? For people coming up here last time and also the testimonial book you have looked at it god has actually changed and causes change in people's life through the establishment of what the righteousness of god that is in us amen and understanding of his grace what about those who are weak and immature remember the weak and immature is not the sickness weak okay is the one that engage in conversations to compete. It's good news. You can be strong in faith. You can be strong in faith. And it's from what we do every week, right? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Amazing, right? Every day, your CG leaders would have sent the verses to you. We started off with John, then Romans, then we completed Genesis, now we are in the book of Mark. 
every day. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. And today, and every week or so, we are also preaching from the Word itself. So I'm going to end here. Can I ask the musicians to, to come up? It's okay. Let's read this verse. Romans 14, 19. It says, So then, make it top priority to live life of peace with harmony in your relationships. Eagerly seeking to what? To strengthen and to encourage one another. This is also another active verse. So what do we do? in the situation like this. That's how Paul is encouraging, remember, the Christians there. Make it top priority to live life of peace and in harmony in your relationship. It is also another active pursuit. It is actually to eagerly seeking to strengthen. If you eagerly seek to strengthen, it means that you can also identify the weak and immature, Right? to eagerly seek and to strengthen. And when you identified it, you also encourage one another. And God's kingdom is this. This is beautiful, right? And that's what the foundation is for. For the kingdom of God is not makan. No, not only that. The kingdom of God is not eating, but Righteousness. And we are doing that now. We are in Romans 14 now. Right? We're going to finish. We are establishing the foundation of righteousness, understanding its importance. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That's wonderful. Amen? Jesus wants your joy to be full and he wants to establish that in your life so that you can live life to its full potential operating in its full potential so that this journey of yours is full of joy that's really wonderful shall we stand Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You know, Jesus faced the same issues also. He's got a company of disciples, right? The 12 disciples. Different ones also got different galaga, bahasa, they call. Huh? Different character different issues or so. Some are weak and immature. But you know what? He took time day after day, year after year, three years of his life devoting to impart and to ensure that they are strengthened and encouraged because it was love that motivates him to reach out to everyone and this is the greatest message this is the greatest saviour that we have who came and looked at everyone and says it's okay it's okay with loving arms he stretched out and he said it is finished at the cross right during communion that was strange. That was something that everyone looked at it and says, wow, but it's a process. It's a journey. Remember, it says, remember, everybody has a history to deal with. Treat them gently. And that's what Jesus did, right? He took time. It's okay. One of them will betray him also. He said, it's okay. It's very similar, church. Some of us are 40 years Christians here 
30 years, 10 years, or maybe less than 5 years. You know what? It's okay. Because what the Lord wants to do and the message is you are welcome in His presence. Each one of us are welcome in His presence. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your word. Thank you that you love us so, so much. And in, by reading and studying, Lord, your word, we can see how much you love us, Lord. So very much, Lord. And we are inspired, Lord, by knowing, Lord, this truth, Lord, but to live a life of love, Lord. Building one another, Lord, for the glory of your kingdom, Lord. That righteousness, peace, and joy, Lord, is permeated from our lives, Lord. Our friends, our neighbours, our family members, Lord. And that's how we shine the light of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. To those of you who is the first time tuning in online or even here, and you have not received Jesus, can I invite you to pray this prayer with me? Lord Jesus, thank you for saving me. I come to you with an open arms and I say, I need you, Lord Jesus. Save me, help me. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I acknowledge that I am a sinner, but you have saved me. And now, Lord Jesus, I have a new life, a new beginning with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus.